Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to have a look at reaction mechanisms and especially the types of reaction mechanisms. Um, things like SN1, E1, SN2, E2 type of uh, nomenclature that's used uh, to describe the types of reactions. I just want to basically explain what those terms mean. So it should be a quite straightforward um, introduction to the naming system. So we look at this uh, reaction here, we've got um, methanol uh, being attacked uh, attacking sorry, 2-bromobutane. Um, now 2 bromobutane is a, a chiral species. If you look at this center here, it's um, it's got no symmetry about that carbon bond. And if you uh, have a look at the um, uh, chiral tutorials and the Carningle prelog uh, tutorials, you'll be able to have a, have a look at how that's been assessed as a chiral center. So I'll just get rid of that star a second. Okay, so basically I'm going to do a, a simple curly arrow attack here from behind so along that um, carbon bromine bond and out pops our bromine or bromide ion there. Now, if you go and draw this mechanism, that's probably what you do pretty quick, but we have to prove that that's actually the case and then we have to give it a name. So the uh, product from that be this. I'll leave the hydrogen on for now. This centered inverts, a bit like an umbrella inverting in the wind. Um, so that'd flip over like that. And that's very important for the reaction mechanism. And this would still be popping out here like this. And the way I've drawn it, that hydrogen would pop over as well, so that'd be over this side like this. Okay. CH2 CH3, so an ethyl group on there like that. And this is still positively charged. And we've got our bromide ion. Okay, so first thing to note here is that this chiral center is inverted. So it's flipped over about this point. And it really is just, it, I, I can't stress it anymore, it's just like an umbrella in the wind. It just pings open. Okay, and it has to do that to leave um, this group because. Oxygen can't attack here because the bromine's in the way, so it attacks from behind in what's called the antibonding orbitals first, which are around here, almost in line with the, well, directly in line actually with the carbon bromine sigma bond there. So it attacks there. And don't, don't worry too much if you don't know what a sigma bond is yet. Basically, it attacks there, and this flips over, and this actually inverts its center. Now, if that happens, this is called an let's get a different colour pen, this is called an SN2 reaction and that's because it it needs um, both species to be present in the slowest step, the rate determining step the rate determining step okay, or RDS sometimes it's called I'll call it RDS when I'm writing from now on. Okay, so what does a rate determining step mean? Well, that is basically the slowest part of the whole reaction mechanism. Remember, I left that proton on there. The next step to make our final product would be to lose a proton. Okay, and that will neutralize that molecule and end up with HBr as, as, a, as a byproduct. Now, that's a very fast step. So imagine it's it's a bit like um, going on a journey, okay? So you you you're in your car. I can't draw cars. But you're in your car, okay? And this is the front of the car. That'll do. I think uh, my artistic skills have been proven there. And you're going on your journey, on your road, okay? I have to bear with me on this one. So you're going on your journey in your car. Now, if you're going, um, say, 30 miles, the the time it takes to start from your home, say, to get to um, school or work or even a friend's house, um, is determined by not the distance but what's going to hold you up in between. Okay, So imagine part of that journey is fast. 
and then all of a sudden you in, end up in some town area and you so you're on a motorway here this is a town and this is another bit of motorway and this is really fast and this is really fast so the time it takes you to get from here to here is actually really determined by the slope step here the going through the town that's what takes all your time it doesn't matter how fast you go there this is a bottleneck this is going to slow you down and that's basically what the rate determining step is it's got nothing to do with cars it's got to do with molecules but the rate determining step basically determines how fast the reaction is going to go and it's really determined then by the slowest step and the slowest step is is um, really part of the me mechanism here so if you've got two molecules that need to come together in this um, slowest step then that would be what's called a, a bimolecular reaction and that's indicated uh, by that two it's a substitution reaction in this case so we're substituting bromine for the methanol so that becomes substitution and that's where the S comes from substitution and it's a nucleophilic reaction because this is a nucleophile this uh, as I said um, I've said before in curly arrow tutorials and things like that uh, a nucleophile is a nucleus loving species so it must be electron rich and this is a nucleophile so that's where that N comes from there so the slowest step in the whole reaction mechanism is this step it's the step where the methanol has to meet this bromobutane now it has to meet it, and they're all whizzing around re really fast, but it also has to attack it, it has to bump into it, if you will, uh, with the oxygen um, right behind the carbon bromine bond. It has to all be aligned, um, maybe not this part aligned that much, but this, this has to be aligned in such a way so those electrons can actually go into the orbitals of this carbon here. Now that almost sounds like an impossible task but obviously we know that organic reactions work and and it does align because it they're colliding so many times um, that you know on the odd chance uh, they're in the right orientation so but this is a very slow step in terms of the reaction rate and this is a very fast step so that doesn't make any difference to the, f the speed at which the uh, reaction takes place okay so that's an SN2 reaction substitution nucleophilic second order so this is a bimolecular process two species are present in the slowest step okay so that's that let's just get rid of that diagram so that is SN2 reaction let's see if I can just move the SN2 actually let's get rid of that because I did draw it SN2, so that's an SN2 reaction, okay? Let's um, yeah, leave that like that. Okay, so what would happen then if the slowest step wasn't uh, the two species coming together? Let's imagine that the slowest step is actually just the bromine and the carbon bond um, breaking apart. So let's, let's just get rid of the, uh, let's draw that again actually. So in this example, we've got CH3, CH2, CH3, H, Br. In this example, the slowest step actually occurs like this. That comes off. That's the first step changing my colour and that leaves what's called a carbocation now I'll draw stereochemistry in for now but CH2 CH3 there's a CH3 there and now we've got a positive charge there now really the best way of drawing that i draw the this means the same as is like this okay and what we have now is a very flat structure 
because there's no electrons in that orbital of the of the sp3 orbital it's called and like I say you don't need to worry about this being called an sp3 that's just a single bond it's called an sp3 for this type of carbon in that orbital uh, there are no electrons so it's flat it doesn't have any shape because the shape of the molecule is determined by um, the electrons really repelling each other and if you remember if not have a look at uh, VSEPR and I will um, this is valence shell electron per repulsion theory and I will um, do a tutorial on that anyway but if, you, if you're not too sure about the shapes of molecules then have a quick look at that as a as a, um, a refresher okay so what we've got here is the uh, a slightly different type of reaction now it's the same molecule but the bromine's left first and it's left this vacant orbital and in doing that it's now become flat so it's lost its stereochemistry nobody knows um, whether um, this hydrogen is sticking out or that or that ethyl group that is sticking sticking out or going backwards because actually it's become flat so when methanol now attacks now I take blue for my methanol now when it attacks with its lone pair if it attacks here imagine this is above the um, the page if you will the um, the screen it's coming in this way um, then you'll get one product which will look very similar to this actually and but it could e equally attack from the other side so imagine it can attack from if you look at this diagram here it can attack here or it can attack here okay so it can actually attack from both sides and what that does this makes this center what's called racemic it, it loses its chiral uh, characteristics the molecule each individual molecule will still be chiral but there will be a mixture of both sets of uh, chiral species and there is no way to statistically determine one over the other so you just get a 50-50 mixture it can attack from that side or that side there's no preference at all if you add some other um, chiral molecule or chiral bit of the molecule here that might influence which side it will go on um, but because we haven't it can attack from both sides so you get a 50-50 mixture so I've just um, moved this down a little bit so the product from that reaction uh, would be nice pen CH3 oh and I'll lose the proton would be this CH3 H CH2 CH3 would be that plus this molecule Actually, what I'll do, I'll draw it the other way around because if I um, if I draw it this way, it might might be a bit confusing for you. So, or it can attack from the other side. So you've got CH3, O, CH3, and then this has been attacked from the other side. So this is going to look like that. H CH2 CH3 okay so uh, so that's and that's 50-50 uh, mixture so 50 50 or oh, 1 to 1 that's just 50 percent okay so and I urge you to have a look if you've done the Carningle prelog and uh, the Lancashire system have a look at this Carroll Center and see if you can assign the RNS configuration for this if you've never heard of that before don't worry about it okay but they are actually mirror images of each other so if I if I just color this one I'll group that one and color it blue and I'll bring that down there hopefully if I've drawn it right and let's color this one red okay and if I draw a mirror plane down there my brush draw a mirror plane down there that's supposed to be a straight mirror okay um, then you'll see that this is a, a mirror image so the way I, I drew it by attacking 
one side or the other you just get the mirror image so they're not super imposable you can't flip this round and impose it because if you turn if you turn this um, molecule round in that direction yeah so you spin spin it round about there so the CH3 goes round here like this then you'll see that that hydrogen will stick out here where that is so it's not super impossible so they are racemic racemic okay that's a racemic mixture rather than be a, an antimerically pure mixture if it's if it's just got one like in this example that's an antimerically pure and then your okay or chiral sometimes it's called chiral but that's a bit misleading saying chiral because if you look at the racemic mixture these are still chiral they've still got this uh, chiral center so to say this isn't a uh, racemic mixture is still chiral um, but you've got um, equal amounts of both chiral species that's all okay so that's that's a that's this kind of reaction here which is slightly different to the one above as you can tell and we've been able to prove it by looking at the chiral center simply just by looking at that never mind anything else this one's called an SN1 reaction okay because the slowest step the rate determin determining step is uh, just involves one molecule so it's one molecule is a fast order or unimolecular um, that um, that very uh, one molecule there leaves, leaves, loses bromine in the form of bromide ion um, but the reaction itself is still a nucleophilic reaction so it's still a substitution of the bromine with methanol so it's a uh, substitution nucleophilic fast order reaction it just means that this bit here is the slowest step this bit then will be fast okay so we're before in the SN2 reaction this was the slowest step this had to attack that and then it had to go once this is formed once this this slow step has been done this reacts really quickly and you get your product so this doesn't really make any difference to the rate of reaction okay so that's SN2 and SN1 um, what I'll do, I'll stop there. This will be in two parts. So this will be covering the uh, substitution reactions. In the second part, we'll look at the elimination reactions. So bye for now.